What is Halloween in New York? Spooky. Silly. Uh, nefarious. <laughs> it's scary. It's like the zombie apocalypse. I'm frightened right now. It's like being the most unapologetically you without any criticism. It's free will. It's like one day out of the year when people really don't give a fuck. Like, like it's okay to really look like shit and people don't care. Like, You get to let your free flag fly. You get to be a demon. What does Halloween in New York mean to you? Do you want to answer the question? <laughs> After the pandemic, Halloween is back and better than ever. Well, the Village Halloween Parade is officially coming back after a year off. It's a return to joy, celebration. This is the best medicine for our city. At the center of New York's costume culture is the iconic store, Halloween Adventure. Halloween Adventure. Halloween Adventure. Halloween Adventure. Halloween Adventure is a New York institution. We made it into the greatest Halloween store in the world and the biggest one in New York City. This place was more than just a retail store. It's a safe space for all of LGBT and the alternative community. My staff, they're punk, they're comedians, they're artists. I love people, they're pierced, tattooed. If they had one leg, that seemed great, they're a pirate. Tony, who founded the store, retired. Ruby's Halloween, the new corporate owners, closed the Halloween store. Six months later, I wanted this store to have a future and live again. We wanted to go out with a bang this time and have one last Halloween. Halloween Adventure has reopened. Like many small businesses in New York, they are shutting their doors after this grand finale Halloween season. This is our final year, the big last hurrah. Brick and mortar stores are closing at an epic pace. How do we keep interactive experiences happening? This iconic place shouldn't be lost. Happy Halloween! <laughs>
learn that the store would be closing, that was, that was rough, that was hard. I wanted the store to reopen and actually have a real Halloween. I started realizing that I was not typical, probably because I was gay, so I, you know, didn't really feel like I fit in in my high school. So I started hanging out with the metalheads, and that turned into the Marilyn Manson like Black Plague, anti conformity, and self expression. The goth infiltrated my high school and my life. I got associated with Halloween Adventure through my friends who actually worked here. This actually was known as a safe haven for the weird, macabre, and unusual beings that we all are. Tony was a nurturer of those like minds. A lot of people looked at Tony like a father figure. Dead celebrities, oh, dead celebrities, great. I was in Seattle when Michael Jackson died, and he died in July. By him dying in July, they were able to get the costumes manufactured by September and October. Because you don't want a celebrity to die in September. You just can't produce it quick enough. Hi, uh, I'm Tony Bianchi, the founder of Halloween Adventure in New York City, with my partner Bruce Goldman. And I retired a couple years ago. We made it into the greatest Halloween store in the world. Used to be, anyway. I started in the Halloween business because I'm a mask maker. I'm a designer, an artist. And I met my partner Bruce Goldman, oh God, in the 90s. Bruce had me do a Halloween store in Jersey. And I said, these people are like vanilla ice cream over here. It only get exciting if a gay couple would come in. At least they had some personality or some style. And I said, you gotta come in New York. So I brought him into the village. Anything that would happen in the village, maybe two or three years ahead of what would happen across the country, nobody would know. I mean, you didn't have Hot Topic, you didn't have the internet. We were cutting edge. And we got bigger and bigger because we were the place to go to. When I started this business, there was no sexy costumes, believe it or not. And yet, you know, the baby boomers, the reason that Halloween was so big, everybody was going to the clubs. There were CBGBs, Webster Hall. Every club in the city discovered Halloween. Once you got sexy, then the sky was limited. We sell thousands of handcuffs. And they go, why? Because handcuffs are sexy. Oh, no, little kids like it for policemen. Hell no. You hang handcuffs down. The first thing, the girls and the guys come in, put the handcuffs on each other. There's something sexy about it. This store grew. It grew organically. If there was a hole in the ceiling, you put an arm coming out of it. It's a collage. My wife, Claudia, who I should mention Claudia, because Claudia has been with me for 46 years. <laughs> Poor girl. She's very creative. She's an artist. And we would just do things nobody else had done. We were just the place to come to for silliness and bizarreness. We had a costume. It was a clear button and it had a little squeezer. And when you squeeze it, diarrhea would fill up <laughs> the butt and it'd fart. When everybody's like, oh, that's disgusting. But that's great, that's stupid, it's ugly. Great. Let's go check out my old office. Tony's back, look who's visiting us. Hello. Hey, we're, we're going, going to, to bar a bar. Do you bar wanna none? come with us? Bar none? Yeah. Wanna go to yeah. bar none? Wanna go to bar none? You guys Ooh. are trading, is that it? You're trading? Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, here you go, there it is. One beer, one beer. <laughs> we'll, we'll make you get one beer and one shot. How about that? <laughs> How do you drink in a bar with a mask on? Very careful. Very careful. Very careful. I, I thought you had to wear a mask. All right, we got pictures. Hey, hey. <laughs> now we just poured this in our mouths. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Cheers to family. All the bars are open. Yep. And Fauci says you can celebrate Halloween. Where's the Fauci mask, too? Where's the Fauci, Fauci mask? mask? How come nobody made a Fauci mask? Yeah. Let me see, is there a Fauci mask? <laughs> it scares the living shit out of people. It's so fucking fun. <laughs> I worked at another store for two years. I came back here for this year to help out Stitch. The history of this community was subcultures. It used to be punk, it used to be gothic, it used to be alternative. Look at that, that's serious Halloween right there. We had people that actually filed their teeth. I love creative people. I always talk about there was vanilla ice cream in Jersey. Well, in New York here, it's, I don't even know what kind of ice cream these people are. They're every flavor in the world. 
long as they didn't steal from me and, you know, uh, came on time, it was fine. I do have one eye, but I still kick ass, so we'll go with that. This young lady does more work than a lot of guys. You got people with three eyes, they couldn't do half the work. They couldn't steal. Thank anything. you, Tony. And Tony has been the boot in the ass that I needed. I've spent almost two decades of my life here, and I've never had a job like this. I've had more jobs than most people. This place is supposed to be, and is, and we're hoping it to still be, a safe space for all of LGBT and the alternative community. I've been coming into the store as a teenager for like years. I have a photo of me in the store when I'm 16. Yeah! Yeah! The store would have not opened without Stitch. Rubies didn't have a clue. They didn't know how to turn the lights on. Oh, I think of it when I wake up in the morning and I think of it when I go to sleep at night. This iconic place shouldn't be lost. This store exists for people who need Halloween every day. If it is the last Halloween, then I think this really is gonna be one of the most remembered years in history. I first went to the Halloween parade in the late 80s. I was wearing this sexy devil outfit. All of a sudden I had every lingerie wearing sexy woman hanging on me and taking pictures. And I just turned to my friend and said, dude, we're coming back every year for this. In 2001, I started a group called the Costume Cult Arts Collective. When 9-11 happened, we were the only float in the Halloween parade in 2001. Our attitude was, if we do not have a float, the terrorists win. It's been a wild ride for two decades. We've gone from a little group to a group that really has made it Halloween year around with monthly activities and thousands of members. One of the most interesting lifestyles that I could have ever imagined. Halloween is upon us. Yes, Another Halloween. Here we go again. Well, I'm excited about this year's Halloween float. Oh. I'm gonna give you a little, a little preview of what I'm thinking. I thought this was playful, so this is a little preview of what I'm gonna wear for the Halloween parade this year. Oh, very nice. Is the village bouncing back? It's not a full force yet. There's a lot of people on the street, but not a lot's happening. Mm. You know? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it might be up to us to shake yeah. it up. I'm confused, like what happened with Halloween Adventure? I, I drove by one day on my bike, I'm like, oh, it's fucking open, this is awesome. Several things happened, you know, number one, a lot of people buy costumes on Amazon now. Mm -hmm. uh, and number two, the owners came in and started firing some of the people who had been there 20 years. Oh. So the soul started getting ripped out of that place. And then during COVID made the decision that it didn't work for the bottom line. They could have kept it open. They just thought, you know, a few grand here and there, it's not worth it anymore. So there goes a New York's institution. And what you saw the other day is a pop-up shop. Unfortunately, Ruby's were ultimately in charge of closing Halloween Adventure because it was too much trouble. They didn't want to save it. They didn't care that it was a New York institution. They did bring back a Halloween adventure for this year because the building was empty, which is very valuable. 10th Street and Broadway in Manhattan. Uh, who knows, maybe they'll knock it down and put up market rate housing or some other affront to New York City's culture. It feels very weird to leave New York. What are you? This is the kind of stuff. How do you how do you give this stuff up? Look at this, look at this. This is so cute. Are we gonna sell these or do you I want to don't know. It depends where we end up. That's coming with us. But you go to oh, these places. If we go to so, one of these places so and only 55, this. they'll think you're these are those um Bell's uh, what was that famous architect? There's little stories behind all this up here. This I got in South Africa in Soweto. Yeah, I brought it back. Yeah, I wanted to have a my children. Is so much more serious than I am. She's very serious. She's a real artist. Yeah, I like rubber vomit. 
<laughs> and doggy, and doggy these, do you know what doggy do we used to up say? here Cheers. twin towers so that's the reason i have it <laughs> they're great we sold loads of these <laughs> why are you guys thinking about leaving what are, what are the it's become are? difficult to stay here first of all it's very expensive yeah, you know, we still have high payments on everything. We're not working. It, if we were younger, it'd be very different. It's a young person city. I mean, you know. I don't know you, about that. Uh, we, we still could. We're lucky. We could still walk. And I could. Yeah, I could gosh. climb stairs. I could do the subway. Yeah, we're good. I'm no so, problem. You know, we're really in the city, how many stores now can afford to be an individual store? If you go to Fifth Avenue now, which was a chic, beautiful, high-end shopping stuff. Now it's full of all these stores you're going to find in a mall. And, 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 and they play it. Wait, yeah. well, anyway, I had. No, 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 no. Well, Let me finish my story okay. and then you could butt in. So, what was it like once Ruby's bought the place? Ruby's was always indirectly connected yeah. because they were their biggest vendor. And when Bruce left, Ruby's took over. So, it got more corporate and they brought people in. That were more corporate. They brought in people who wanted to do things their way and not look at how successful we were doing what we well, did. They, we, they, were, they were looking at us like... Oh, like it was ironic. No, no. It was ironic. Oh, we love what you do. You're amazing. Oh, but well, you can't do this anymore. You have to do it this way and this way and that way. I, I don't want to bad-mouth it. I'm bad-mouthing them because they you, ruined their store. I know, no, no, no. It's just... It, it's the luck of I the draw. I didn't give their names. I know, but it's the luck of the draw. It's the luck of the draw. No, it, it isn't. It just happened. That's the politics It shouldn't have it. happened. It's the politics of it. It was, it's just every it was store. bad judgment on the company that yeah, took all, us over. All, I can tell you, when I go to the trade shows, the Halloween industry has changed. If we bought something for $10, we'd have to sell it for a minimum of $20. That's the standard retail price. But when Amazon would sell it for $15. And it looks like they have everything, but they really don't. They're not going to buy something that might only sell a dozen. But you can get away with that in a small store. If things wouldn't have changed, we'd probably still be doing it, <laughs> even though we're this old. I'm sorry I'm not there, to, in a way, because I still care about it so much. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember, do not open any of the packages. If you need any assistance, please check with one of us, and we will be glad to help you. Thank you very much. Folks, keep it moving through this walkway. Thank you. This day is the most important day because it's Mischief Night. It's the day that the mischief comes into our souls and our hearts with the spirit of Halloween. Wow. This is where it happens, the sorting, the fixing. Due to COVID and everything, it's like we're so, we still have a lot of stuff that we're still waiting to get in order. We're like a little bit like under staff. We need more stuff. Welcome to the madness. Does anybody else need any help today? Business is booming at Halloween Adventure. New Yorkers line the block outside costume stores. Hey, my family's coming. It's amazing. It's like going into Best Buy, but a whole nother level of Best Buy without technology. How's it feel since you guys buy everything on Amazon? How does it feel to be able to go in the store and see all that stuff? At once? It's, it's awesome. I absolutely love it. I hate being online, and I just love being outside and with my friends. Toys R Us shut down like years ago. It's just cool having Stitch as our uncle to be able to go like go into his office and things. Like it's really fun. He's Uncle Stitch to you? No, he's Uncle Jason. His real name's Jason. Oh, mom. Oh, you're That's what mom. I'm gonna be for Halloween, and you can't scare me because I have grandchildren. Cool. She always made me my own, made homemade Halloween costumes, costumes for me. Every year. My first Halloween costume was a skunk, and it said, "I'm a little stinker." Yes, yeah. and he won first place when he was three years old. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow we get to see our work pay off. Everyone's ready to unleash and party like rock stars, or villains, or superheroes, or scary monsters, or fruit, or food. Happy Halloween! Today is the day we have all been waiting for. The return of Halloween. Barricades are being set up for West Village Halloween Parade. It's making a comeback after being canceled last year. 
There are people here from all over the world. Thousands of costume New Yorkers hoping to fright and delight. On the night when the Halloween parade happens, it's just a festival of interactivity. People are coming out of the subways. People are converging. There's an excitement in the air. It gets to a fever pitch. I'm getting goosebumps right now just telling you about it. Seven o'clock, the parade begins on 6th Avenue. Our team is there setting up, adding art, adding lights. It is so exciting. There is so much energy. The sun's coming down. The drumming is starting. The big puppets are arriving. Live along 6th Avenue as we get ready to march. It's time to get back out in the street, celebrate New York's diversity, and party like it's 2019. of characters. Tonight is all about resilience. And you know Halloween is back when you spot New York's costume cult. All right, let's spin the wheel again. Spin the wheel again. Whatever part it lands on, you have to touch the person wearing that color. Purple! Purple! Everybody, put your left foot on someone's ass that's purple. Purple, purple. Consent purple. Purple. Consent My ass is available for touching. This night is a visual feast, a sea of sensory overload. We expect nothing less in New York City. A parade we will never forget. Tonight was an escape and a release. The city's back, it's safe, and it's exciting. I have to be here because it's important to show that life goes on. And don't stop New York City from nothing. We're New Yorkers, we love New York, and we're going to continue living our lives. I know for a lot of people, this Halloween parade was the first time out. Here we are in New York City, a theater town. All of this city is a stage and the show must go back on.
I usually open up every morning, so I'm here in the dark with all the creatures. <laughs> It's really bittersweet, Mystic. I'm really, really having a hard time just walking through the store. And I feel like I grew up here. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen really after today. There's a lot of uncertainty. I'm like 52 and all I know is retail. I haven't been in the job market for 18 years. So I'm a little scared, you know? I got the experience, but a lot of places are hiring a lot of younger people, younger talent. It almost feels like you like that feeling when you're graduating high school and everybody's going in different directions. I didn't know there was going to be another Halloween season. And I was thankful for that, mm -hmm. that we had another chance. None of this would have been possible if it wasn't for Tony. I got so much love for that man. <laughs> you know, it's... I wanted to make Tony proud, you know? I wanted to recapture some of that magic. And I did my best. I still feel it didn't need to end the way that it did. Someone else needs to come up and pick up the baton. Because you sold during Gay Pride, right? Gay Pride this year was out of control. It was amazing. I sold more bisexual flags this year than I did the gay ones, believe it or not. You know what gay capitalism is? They don't have any kids. No. Nope. So they buy Halloween stuff. Yep. <laughs> People that might be buying us, their kids said, I want that house that is the Halloween house. The stuff I got from that photographer, I have, there's machine guns, there's like revolvers, bayonets. I couldn't let them out for rental for like television shows and movies. This. You know, it's like, it's like treasure hunting. Like, look how cool these are. I mean, these are totally like, all these guns, you know. This is like a real military belt pouch, like leather. These machine guns and all this cool stuff. The prop makes the costume. I'll never stop selling costumes. I've been collecting these props and treasures to sell at the gothic store down the street from Halloween Adventure. But the old Halloween building is still there, vacant, and I still have my keys, and I like to check up on the store from time to time. To see it not alive right now, to see it closed, it's, it's a little sad to me. Seeing as it's been almost a year after taking that plunge and having the Halloween store reopen, I'm gonna try my hardest to see if that can happen again, and this time, keep it open. Brick and mortar stores are closing. What's gonna come in here? Walgreens closed, Kmart's closed, The Gap closed. What's gonna come in? They're all closed. Everything is online. I don't smell people's bad breath or smell their farts. Here, when you come in here, you know, you smell the farts, the fart machines, the, they, they break the fart capsules, that kind of, that silliness. I feel like you have a lot of people telling you no. What, <laughs> what do you, when everybody tells you no, you say, fuck it, I'm gonna do it anyway. Why, why do you feel the need to do that? Why do you think we need people to do that? I can't help it. You know, every, you know, it, as you know, a lot of people say no, that the real estate's too expensive and 
this is, you know, this reason or that reason. And all I care about is the existence of this store and the bringing it back to, to life so that it doesn't fall into this static white noise of nothing. That's it for me. Anything else you want us to say? Happy Halloween. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm